All right. Well, today is January 20th, 2021, and we at the Art Center are just getting ourselves organized to start Centered on the Center. So we have Susan Stone. She is one of our newer Artist Council members. Uh, we're thrilled to have her on board. She brings great uh, enthusiasm and commitment and just a wonderful voice to our organization. Hi, my name is Susan Stone. I'm an artist here in San Diego. I'm a member of the Huntington Beach Arts Council. Love this group. They're amazing. Um, you can see my work in the 2021 Centered on the Center Art Show. A lot of great artists, a lot of great art. I'll talk about winter solstice first. Um, it was just a lovely day. And um, we had that star, the conjunction of the planets going. So I was really excited about that. I was painting on an old panel that I made with my husband and they're really cool because they have rivets in it. And it's very uh, urban looking. And I was painting outside. So it has a lot of texture to it from stuff blowing around. And I just got beautiful colors. We live about 10 miles straight inland. So you can just see little slivers of the ocean. So we get beautiful color outside and I'm always out back painting. And I did that real quick. And then I actually went to La Jolla and Torrey the next day and got sketches and some photos of the water washing over the rocks and kind of added that all in there. But it was very quick. And I just looked at it and I thought, I really love this. And um, we put an old frame on it too, which really brought it out. And I just, it's, it's a lovely piece that just, it was like a journal entry to me. So I hope somebody can look at it and feel that too. And um, the other piece is Lemonade, the bigger piece. That is an interesting story of a series of mishaps. So um, with a lot of my big pieces, and it turned into, I have a whole series of beautiful paintings from that. Um, it's a digital imaging on canvas, but from an original painting. But then I completely changed the whole face of the painting with some, with uh, just a lot of texture and brushwork and um, drip, like I dripped my brush, not the poor kind of painting, but I dripped and really did a lot of cool stuff with it. And I just, I took something that could have been, you know, something you put away and forget about and turned it into something I really love. And um, that was why I called it Lemonade. Yeah. And it's got that green palette that everybody seems to love that. I think right now, especially because it's so calming. So I love to stay within that. I, ha I work with that color composition a lot. I, I like to be out a lot. I like to hike. I like to, of course, go to the ocean, the water. Sometimes I'll take big canvases with me on my back. <laughs> and um, I travel back and forth to Arizona a lot. I love New Mexico. And I just, um, I enjoy the simplicity of the color, like um, defining the landscape with just bands of color rather than putting in all those details sort of like um, if you, you know, you walk into a room, you don't have to think about it too much about what's going on. It leaves it, the interpretation open to the viewer, in my opinion, so you can connect with it. And I just, uh, I don't really have a process for starting. I just feel like um, I'll see something and it's enjoyable to me and I'll just start on the canvas. That was how I developed coming across the country it just kind of changed me and I came into my own because it was the first time I started creating big canvases with no, um, no, I don't want to say agenda, but no pre-planned, like, oh, I'm going to do this today and I want the light to hit it a certain way. I just started working and it just started flowing out and I really started to feel that and it was a really big thing for me, a big a big turning point for me as an artist to feel that and then to look at a piece and go, it's done. 
you know, just to slop on a bunch of color and it's done. My tools are mostly um, big brushes. I love brushes, uh, big ones, details, anything. And I love to just go on. Um, if you watch me work on a big canvas like this, I just brush a lot like this and then I'll brush a lot like that. And um, sometimes I'll mix up paint and buckets and pour it from different heights on ladders. And uh, I just always experiment how I can get the paint onto the surface and what it's gonna do once it does that. I love Helen Frankenthaler for that reason. I mean, you just see her, she's just all over the place. And I've always loved that. And I saw a lot of her work in museums in Washington. And I just always was like, you know, how to just sit all day and, you know, free kind of free fall, I guess, so. I was born in Washington, D.C., grew up like in Silver Spring. My dad was military and um, he was an artist and, it, and you know, as a hobby. And um, he used to let me paint, like, but I had to, he, I had to take wood from a wood pile, sand it and plane it, stretch my own canvas. And my brother and I used to call it painting boot camp. And he, that's what we had to do if we wanted to paint. And I would do it and my brother would say, what are you thinking? I said, I wanna paint. So he let me paint with oil at like age nine. And I've always loved it. I can't think of a time when I didn't want to be an artist in my life or, you know, I think everyone is an artist, honestly. And I'm not just saying that, but I feel fortunate that I had support in all areas of my life, my husband, my kids to um, always explore it and always grow. So um, I, was in a really bad accident when I was 20. And um, I almost, I, I, they didn't know if I was gonna make it or not. I almost lost my leg. I was in the hospital for a long time. And when I got out, I thought, you know, something's got to change in my life. And I just, uh, it was my dad kind of telling me, you know, art, you've always, that's, that's what's always been there for you. You know, I had a lot of stuff happen and, um, I just started pursuing that, went to school. I uh, was started out as a communications major. I married my husband. We were out in um, Illinois. I did some, some school out there. Uh, out there, I was a fine art major with a, um, it was a double degree with a minor in pa uh, painting illustration. So then I came back and I went to a private college and changed my major to communications and it was just a disaster. So then I just started trying to get experiences on my own. You know, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna make this work? And um, I had two kids at that time. And that was another thing too. They didn't know when I had this accident if I could have children. So to have them was just a miracle for me. And I wanted to be able to embrace motherhood, but at the same time, you know, grow my career and on my terms. I ended up, I wanted to teach and I, that, I just kind of fell into that too. Um, I had my degree in communications and with a concentration in graphic arts. I started working in all kinds of different places, really great jobs but some of them were 80 hours a week and I had two young kids at home. And I came home one night and um, my youngest daughter at that time was asleep on the steps, but my mom was watching her through the window. She wouldn't come in. And um, she, my mom said she wouldn't leave. She was waiting for you. And I just was, after that, I was done. I thought there's just no way I can miss out. My husband already was working eight, 80 hour weeks. And I thought there's, why would we do this? So then I just started, you know, doing some freelance um, stuff, you know, projects here and there. Then I got a call from a guy opening a music and art school and he wanted me to direct the art program. I just, I fell right into it. I had already been working with the kids at home a lot, my own. So I went in, I developed all the programs for the school from K through 12 
art, drawing, painting, mixed media, 3D, I, and I did it all. It really was a like just a wealth of experience. And then I wanted to leave because at that time I had four kids by this time. And um, our son, the youngest, he was still just a baby. So then I wanted to dig deeper with that. And I went back to grad school for art ed K through 12. I still kept teaching on my own. Uh, I had, you know, the time is going on by this time. I have uh, two daughters in college. They're both, one is a graphic design major. One is um, photography and textile design in Chicago. She went to the School of the Art. And she actually would come home and do the uh, college age camps. We would do this great photography camp, all kinds of really great camps. And it was really just taking off. And then, <laughs> my husband got uh, the job to come out here. Always be adaptable. There's always inspiration in everything you do. There's always something. I learned something from every step that makes me the artist that I am today. It's all in there. And um, it, it let everything shape you. And always learn, um, even from, you know, I was listening to Jeff Koons the other day, and I'm not a big fan of his, but I, he, everything that, he, every art has merit and value, he says, whether you like it or not, it still has value, learn something from it. And I do believe that. I think if you can get a class where you don't like the teacher, don't like his work, don't like his philosophy, take it, because you're going to learn more about yourself as an artist when you do that. And I always read and you should always learn. I know that sounds like cliche too, but you have to always keep learning. You cannot stop. There's so much out there to learn and it will make your art stronger if you keep, you know, and look at art and go anywhere. That was another thing Kuhn said too, when you're out and about and you see something that's beneficial to something you want to make. You know, that let every experience influence what you're doing. I think it's a testament to my growth. And I think that I create on my own terms. I don't let, um, you know, I've grown so much. It used to be, and, and this is a rite of passage too. I think, you know, when you're young, you'll do whatever anybody wants you to do if they're gonna give you a check. <laughs> and I feel like I, I earned my stripes and I am able to just create what I want to create. And if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't, that's okay too. And the most that I want people to look at my work and feel joy. And if people can do that, because I feel so joyful when I create it, that if people can feel that and it comes through, that's all I need. And I love color, obviously. So I, I want that to definitely come through. One, artist groups, find art organizations that you really connect with. And I feel like I've always done that. I, um, you know, and I'm serious, I'm uh, um, honest with myself. Is this a group that, you know, I can not saying anything about any group, but, you know, you have to be comfortable or inspired or are they doing cool things that you want to be involved in? I think getting, doing that and getting your art and shows is good. Um, the website is crucial. I, I have my daughter's, uh, my oldest daughter's a multimedia designer and she did my website for me, but, you know, working with her, telling her what I really want, make sure your website is a reflection of who you are because people are constantly looking on Instagram and your website for stuff. I mean, opportunities are everywhere in that regard, I think, and always be active with it, you know, comment on people's stuff. I read somewhere in a book, um, you know, go to 50 sites and make a comment of 50 sites that you like that you don't follow or they don't follow you and just make a comment and, and see what happens. You know, always look for things and, you know, go out and look at art and talk to people. I always introduce myself as an artist, regardless. And in conversation, you never know what's going to come up. And I've been working nonstop 
and it's paying off. And um, I haven't done too much promotion, but I'm getting ready to. And I don't, you know, I want to start doing that. And you can do that online now too, because of this situation. Don't let this get you down. Just, you know, get yourself out. Take advantage of everything that's on Zoom now. Classes, you know, do you guys have some great classes going? Uh, you can take classes clear across the country now and meet, you know, extraordinary people. Much in the same, just conversation, the website. And, um, you know, I have some limited licensing on things that have brought me other opportunities. But if you seek that out, you have to be prepared because it's not as fun as everybody thinks. You know, it's, it's a lot of work for not so much money. It can be great exposure, but you have to be very careful who you um, let license your work to. And it's very commercial. But um, I actually like it because it's an outlet for a lot of you know, paintings that I might not exhibit anywhere. You know, I have like a little set that I really just mess around with and then some that I take a little more serious. I'm falling into a place now where it's a lot of word of mouth too. Like, oh, you sold this to so-and-so. Can, can you do something like that for me, but maybe with these colors? And mm -hmm. it's, you know, you just kind of keep working on that. Uh, accumulation of things, um, the, uh, the price of the materials, of course, um, time. I know some artists that actually log the time. I, I can't do that. I just kind of do the artwork, look at it and price it accordingly to other work. Oils are more expensive. You know, there's a lot of other stuff going on. You got to let the oil dry. It takes time there. Um, yeah, uh, it, it depends on size. And um, I just kind of figure all those things out and I have a base price and I kind of go from there. And definitely uh, the time that you're putting into it. I love Huntington Beach um, through, you know, going out there for the surf competitions and stuff and always just driving through. We have a lot of uh, family in the Los Angeles area. So we're always, and I, I just love it. And I started looking for um, exhibits. We went to one exhibit that was from the branched out from the US Open. It was a uh, silk screen. It, this guy had done a whole exhibit of silk screens and you could go out and try it yourself. And then I saw the center and I was like, wow, that place is beautiful. And I started looking into it. And then um, one year, I think we went, uh, to something that was from them through, I think at the surf history and just that they were all connected, so connected with the community. And I, I love that because I feel like anytime you can bridge community with art, you're really onto something. And just in looking at the website and then membership, I felt like that was really gonna be work out for me because that's what I love. And I, you guys are doing amazing things with the community, it's fantastic and all the, art projects that you do with families and stuff. I, I love that kind of stuff.